Coming up at 11, we'll tell you how a concert tonight benefited a local fire department. Stay with us. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News Weekend Edition. Good evening, I'm Katie Cook. Well, firefighting gear is expensive. Many volunteer departments in our area face the same funding shortage problem. Tonight, Wheelwright Fire Department in Floyd County held a concert to help with expenses. WYMT's Marion Fletcher was there and has the details. Running a volunteer fire department is not cheap. It costs about $2,500 for a set of turnout gear, about $6,500 for um, SCBAs. The government requires departments to purchase these items. So we always try to come up with new ways to have the community participate in different activities. And unfortunately, the standing on the roadside things kind of kind of fall into the past. Tiffany Riviera and Sam Little know they need to be creative. I mean, there's some serious talent in this area, so we decided to tap into that and, and use that as a resource. Hosting a concert at the Will Wright Gym with local talent Nathan Hall and Sweet Run. Bringing a concert of a lot of different musical artists uh, that are actually local to the area is really a, an amazing way that we can actually raise funds for the fire department. Riviera says the department serves the community in more ways than one. And having fundraisers like this is just one little way to keep it always going. <laughs> Playing tunes and raising funds in Floyd County. Marianne Fletcher, WYMT Mountain News. For 100 years, the Wheelwright Fire Department has served the surrounding community. Members say they want to thank everyone for coming out tonight. Well, today the funeral for 13-year-old Corey Godsey was held at the Heineman Funeral Services Chapel. Godsey died in an apparent animal attack on Tuesday in the Emelana community. A life taken, leaving community, leaving the community with questions. Danny Terry, owner of Heineman Funeral Services, said it is good to see a community continue to show their love and support. Everybody's kind of worried about uh, this little family that's lost their child. Shouldn't worry, worries are lack of faith, but we worry that something like this could happen to ours. While family is still mourning, they hope this can help others be more careful. While rain chances will be rolling in over the next several hours and as we head into Monday, we're still staying dry for the moment. I mean, conditions looking great as we look into downtown Whitesburg. Calm conditions right now, really just looking at this cloud cover. We've seen this cloud cover really ramp up over the past couple of hours. A lot of us in the mountains now seeing those overcast conditions, but they've kept us on the warmer side tonight. A lot of us in those upper 40s right now, so still on the warmer side, so seeing some nice Nice temperatures out there, but rain chances will be coming back into the mountains by the time you wake up tomorrow morning. So make sure to have that rain gear laid out and ready to go with you as you head out the door tomorrow because we will be looking at scattered showers pretty much all day. But I'll have more details on that and a cool down that we will be looking at by the time we get into the end of the week in just a little bit. Katie? Thank you, Brooke. Officials with the Laurel County Sheriff's Office say a man was arrested last night after strangling a woman. Deputies say when they arrived to the scene, they could hear a woman making choking noises from outside a home. When deputies went inside, they say they told 32-year-old Daniel Hornsby of London to stop choking the woman, but he did not stop. Deputies say they had to interfere and eventually arrested Hornsby. He was taken to the Laurel County Correctional Center. Well, Martin City Police Chief Kenny Stidham says he tried to pull over a pickup truck on Saturday afternoon, but the truck did not stop. Officials say 37-year-old John Tackett of Harold, Kentucky, was driving the truck. The chase went on for several miles until Tackett crashed the truck on Kentucky Route 2030 in the printer area. Officials say Tackett crashed into two patrol cars, one belonging to the police chief and one belonging to the Floyd County Sheriff's Department. Tackett was arrested and is facing several charges. Charges. Well, a Lexington man is behind bars, accused of breaking into an apartment and stealing a woman's underwear. Nathan Wiley is charged with burglary and is being held in the Fayette County Detention Center. Krista Frost sat down with the victim of the crime, who says Wiley is her neighbor. Running errands, we all do it. I was on for an hour and a half, two at most, 
And when I came back, my back door was wide open. That was last week, and it wasn't the first time this woman who wanted to remain unidentified or her neighbors noticed odd activity on Kennesaw Drive. And a couple of weeks ago, one noticed that their back door was left open. Two of us have small children, so we were convinced at the time that maybe a kid had left the door open. With nothing missing or misplaced, the neighbors just went on with precaution. But it was this last Friday, one neighbor set up a camera inside of her home. The camera was linked to her phone, so she saw him actually going through a dirty hamper. Grabbing and taking a woman's used underwear. Police arrested Nathaniel Douglas Wiley for the crimes. The hardest part for the group of neighbors to wrap their head around? This is our neighbor. The woman we talked with and others living nearby are now all on edge, wondering what will happen next, how much Wiley knows about them, and if they're safe to stay in their own homes. I'm very disturbed because at this point, I'm, I'm feeling like there's some cameras somewhere. <laughs> the neighbor who actually has the camera footage, she hasn't even come home. She says she hopes the landlord will ask Wiley to move out, but if not, she'll be joining neighbors in making their exit to live somewhere else. Trust your gut. Once you walk in and feel like something's off, something's off. <laughs> in Lexington, Krista Frost, WKYT. Now, Wiley told officers he had a couple of drinks and decided on a whim to break into the woman's home. She and people that live nearby tell, say that they're convinced that that is not true. Well, the CEO of Brady Industries is firing back at allegations that he was misusing company funds. Last week, Craig Craig Bouchard filed suit against the company he founded over his removal as CEO and chairman. In a response filed Thursday, Brady officials say there were several red flags confirming Bouchard's use of funds, including personal expenses charged by Bouchard to the company's credit cards. Bouchard denies those claims, saying, quote, I take great care with the expenses that I incur on behalf of the company, and to my knowledge, I have at all times acted properly and in accordance with company operating agreements, authorities, bylaws, and my employment agreement. And after two arrests and 375 tips, baby Evelyn Boswell is still missing. The Tennessee Bureau of Investigation tweeted another photo of the missing 15-month-old. The tweet also mentioned the tips. The law enforcement say two people have been arrested in the case. They are Angela Boswell, Evelyn's grandmother, and William McCloud. They are due in court Monday after being taken into custody in North Carolina Friday. Evelyn is the focus on a statewide Amber Alert. She's been missing since December. Consolidated Baptist Church in Hazard celebrated Black History Month today. Church and community members started the event off with lunch. The church had City of Knoxville Councilwoman Amelia Parker as a guest speaker. Her dad is the pastor of the church. She tells us what Black History Month means to her. To spend time having a more thorough investigation and understanding of ourselves, our lived history. Even though Parker lives in Knoxville now, she is originally from Eastern Kentucky. Coming up on Mountain News Weekend Edition, an East Tennessee couple is still quarantined in Japan because of the coronavirus. And a gas leak forces hundreds of people to leave their homes. And we have some rain showers just around the corner. I'll have more details on that next.